Hello everyone, good evening to all of you. So this is a re-recording of the live class that we held on trying to understand AWS. So basically an introduction to AWS, uh, some of the common tools that are there, what, what do they mean, why do we use it, and how we might be able to use it. So I'll bring up a screen here and I'll directly get to exploring AWS. So uh, to try AWS, everybody should have an AWS account or somebody who has an AWS account will be able to share it with you. So the last recording did not happen, unfortunately. And this is a retrial of it, a re-recording of it. All right, so we go to AWS, we try to sign in. Okay. Password should work. Okay, that works. Uh, so when you first log in and when you have signed up, uh, you should be at this screen. Uh, this will show you and I'll make it slightly bigger for everyone to see properly. Okay, this, I think, yeah, this is fine. Okay, so once, once we are in the AWS dashboard, you would have an interface like this. Uh, before I get to individual items here and what are the tools available here, let me talk about cloud a bit, right? Why do we need cloud? What is What are cloud technologies? What are some options of cloud technologies? So, uh, why do we need cloud? What is cloud? Uh, so imagine that we have got a small store, small business, let's say uh, a store for selling apparels, right? So apparel store in your local neighborhood store. Now, uh, you're just starting your business and you want a website to be up. So what you do is you go and get a small machine, let's say a 25,000 rupees machine. And in that you host your uh, files that you have got for the website. So there'll be some HTML files, there might be a backend. So that particular 25,000 machine might be good enough for you to host the web server. So now people are able to view your uh, products from there and also order from there. Let's say you have a delivery mechanism. Now, because you are a very good uh, shop and your product catalog was quite good, the business grew. grew. And now over the last next six months, you have grown a business 10x or 100x, right? So let's say if earlier you had about 1,000 monthly uh, orders now that has grown to let's say hundred thousand monthly orders what you realize is your website your website has gone slow and people you know are complaining that you know i'm not able to see the products properly sometimes the images are not loading so those kind of performance issues are primarily what you will start to hear so what you go you go into the market and you know you see that you know what my machine is not good enough i'll go and buy another one so now you go and invest another fifty thousand you get a better processor more ram more storage and let's say your machine is now seventy five thousand rupees you're able to serve one lakh customers great now you become quite big, right? Let's say you have got five, uh, five or 10 stores in the city and your uh, monthly orders is 10 lakh. That would be humongous. So 10 lakhs, uh, 10 lakh monthly orders and again, you start facing the same issue. So do you go and buy another machine, right? Do you go and buy another machine? So what really happens is, it is not just about the machine, it is also about the infrastructure that supports it. So do you have good internet available that these many people are able to access it? Do you have an IT person? Because if something goes wrong, somebody has to fix it. Right. Suppose you want to start add new storage. Who adds? Do you are you capable of doing it yourself? Are you able to add new RAM yourself? So because there are these uh, questions there about the efficiency of the systems, uh, the upgradability of the systems, the resiliency, the resiliency of the systems. So let's say your store has a power shutdown. Right. Your area has a power shutdown. Your website goes down immediately. Right. What would you do in that case? So you will again again get a power backup. What happens if power backups goes goes down? So to remove all these worries what you try to do is instead of hosting this content at your own place you host it at somebody else's place now that is basically cloud so many people might give you a very different idea about what cloud is but this is basically cloud right so instead of hosting something from your own place you host it at somebody else's place who is that somebody else those somebody else are big organizations like it's aws gcp microsoft uh, microsoft azure or you know even smaller players than that but i won't say digital ocean is a small player but still the big one but then there are many, many small players as well small to big and medium business are there around hosting these kind of services what they will ensure for you is power backup great internet speed uh, resiliency of the system uh, upgradability of the system so you will have ready ram to be available to attach to your machine right so you would have ready storage available so instead of having a 500 gb storage you might be getting to two terabyte storage in a moment right so it will take you a minute to attach a new storage now that kind of speed is not available when you're trying to go around and shop somewhere else. So that is why you use cloud. 
uh, if there are questions comment in the video uh, comment in the video or on the whatsapp group that we have got and i will be able to answer you that so that is the purpose of crowd cloud and as a developer why do you need cloud so as a developer you will need cloud when you are hosting your website somewhere so suppose you are locally building something all of these not need to go somewhere to go live right you won't be hosting for a own, own machine so that is where something like aws comes up something like gcp comes up so your you will have a network admin in your company who would be or a devops admin who would be managing the aws account here where they will have admin level access and will be doing the iam access role to add you there, then you will get access to a particular, let's say, a EC2 machine where you can go and host your code. So now from here, let us go into the different services that are available and then we will uh, explore as much as we can and we might be able to go into more depth in a second video and a second session. So all right, so first of all, I talked about IAM, what is that? So what you could do is you could just search IAM, uh, Okay, manage access to AWS resource. That is exactly what it does. Many people have this question that I want to learn IAM. There's nothing to be learned in IAM, honestly. It is just a plain simple service of being able to add people to your AWS account. The complication might come where you are controlling the kind of features that are available to that user. So suppose you have a user who is uh, on a management level who do not want to have, have a developer level access or EC2 access, machine access or S3 access. All they want is to go and be able to see the billing. Like somebody in your accounts department might be wanting to see that. You give them only billing access. Let's say you have got a developer who is hosting something, uh, some website through an EC2 machine. Now that, that person will just need the access to the EC2 machine. They won't need access to the billing. So that is how you control it. So that is exactly what you do. There are groups, there are users, there are roles, policies, access analyzer. So I go into IAM and we wait. Okay. So once we are there, we will see there's one user. So this user we got uh, created yesterday. We got uh, created a user named Swami. And if we look at Swami, we assign two policies to it. Swami can have a read only access on S3 and they have IAM user change password. So which means that they can come in, they can change their own password. That is it. So is he part of any group? No, you can create a group and have many people in it. So let's say you call a group as web developer. So all the web developers will be there. You can create a group called quality assurance and all the people from quality assurance can be in that team, right? So groups is like teams. Tags, you can tag the key value pairs. Tags are key value pairs that you can add to AWS to help identify. They are basically uh, a tag that you will give to a particular group or any kind of policies that you are doing. Uh, security credentials, access advisor. So what you could do is you could add a new user like this. So suppose I go here, I go to users again, I add a user and this time we are adding a user name. Who else is on the team? So there's somebody called Ujwala on the team. I think she writes this one like this, yeah. Provide user access to AWS management console. So do, do you want them access to this particular console that we are seeing here? That's the question. Uh, you can give them access to machines. So you can give them SSH access to machine and do not, they do not have, uh, they won't have these kind of access to the uh, dashboard. So this is a decision that you're making here. So specify your user in IT center or I want to create an IAM user. I'm creating a user. So auto generated password, user must create a new password at next sign in, okay, next. Then add user to group, no attach policies directly. So let's say for Ujwala, I want to give her administrator access and I might be able to also give her, let's say uh, EC2, something like EC2 container, EC2 full access or readme access, just readme access, let's do that, right? So now that I have given this permission, uh, this user, okay, they have these three permissions. I'm not tagging anything, done. So yeah, this user is now created. I have got the username, I've got the password and I've got the console sign in URL. So that particular user will be able to, I'm not showing this because somebody who sees this will be able to get this, this and enter this to do that. What you could do, you can download a CSV file and pass it on to Ujwala or you could email the sign in instructions. Somehow this link was not working yesterday and it is not working today. But then I have seen this working in the past. Anyway, moving from here. So this is all uh, there is in IAM. So obviously there can be more complication. There could be a lot of security policies. There could be um, groups that you create, there could be tags you create. So you might be able to use it in that way. All right. Uh, but while we are here on this dashboard, we should also look at what are the main elements of this page, right? So services, this will list you all kinds of services that are available. If you click on all services, you will see everything, but these are broad level, uh, top level uh, domains, which might you might open. So if you want something for database related, you can click on database 
and you will see the services that Amazon offers. So document DB, Dynamo DB, Elasticash, key spaces, Neptune, uh, RDS. So RDS is what we will also look at. All right. Uh, moving from here, uh, on the right, you see this is Mumbai. What is Mumbai here? So uh, AWS will have multiple regions. So AWS has two regions in India, Mumbai and Hyderabad. Mumbai has been there from long. Uh, Hyderabad is new and that is why you could see Hyderabad here. It is not available to me because this account is new. For, uh, new. Uh, and that it says here so there are 10 regions that are not enabled for this account probably these are all new regions i'm not sure Bahrain was an old region already so uh, something with my account anyway so these there are multiple regions so you see these these are regions in us these are regions in asia pacific they are in europe canada south america so how does a business decide where do i want my servers to be so let's say i am a uh, i am a uh, i am a product company here in Bangalore so and my users are in India in that case I will clearly choose Mumbai to be the region where I want to do that but let's say I'm building a service for the Europe market right so primarily my users are in Europe so I won't choose Mumbai in that case because then the traffic will travel from Mumbai from Europe to Mumbai region to get it right so it will be a slow little long way for data to travel and go back to them so instead of doing that I would go somewhere in this region probably I'll pick something like Frankfurt or London because they have the best speeds in my opinion uh, they, it might, I might be wrong there but yeah Frankfurt and London as far as I know have great speeds and great access across all the regions so yeah so that is what I will choose my region to be since I'm in Mumbai uh, like in India today and I would want to use Mumbai so I'm leaving it to be Mumbai at, at the moment um, moving from here you can see AWS health cost and usage so there are no issues there are no schedule changes there are no issues there are no notifications so this is the data that AWS provides to all developers and anybody who's using the dashboard in terms of any incidents that might have happened at AWS. So suppose today AWS says that I have had an issue at Hyderabad center. So power has power is not there. So they would put it at somewhere in open issues, right? Or schedule changes. If they schedule that, you know, tomorrow we are doing some maintenance in Hyderabad region, so Hyderabad region will be unavailable. It will be put up here. Anyway, build a solution. You can just explore this anyway uh, moving from here and let's look at what ec2 is i could go and type ec2 here so ec2 is one of the most common services that people use and that is why it is the first topic that we pick up so ec2 is just like a machine but not at your place somebody else's place uh, which is let's say i've got a laptop i've got a windows laptop i've got a mac laptop i've got a linux machine right uh, and i can use it at my own place but suppose i want to have used cloud just for the topics that we discussed before like resiliency, availability, uh, replication, upgradability, anything like that, right? So you suppose you have decided now that you want to use uh, cloud, then you will go for having an EC2 machine there. And instead of using your own machine, you will use that machine for anything that you like. For example, uh, I want to host my website. I will go and copy my files there and host it there. I want to run a job that might be taking a lot of RAM. So let's say, uh, I was working at a previous company where we had a job, we had Android OS, we built Android OS from source code and it took a lot of time, if I remember correctly, it used to take about 40 to 50 minutes for the code to be built from scratch for Android OS 10, I think. Uh, what we did, we got a very beefy machine, we got a 64 GB machine in AWS and we want, we uploaded our code there and ran the job there. So that took about 12 to 14 minutes right for running the same build job so that was an excellent implementation where we saved a lot of time because we were using cloud i hope this example is clear for now because that is something we have used uh, there anyway so instances running zero elastic ips load balances snapshot auto scaling groups instances so let's look at what the instance says is a machine this is a running instance this is a all instances even if you have turned off the instance it will show up here the running instance will show here elastic ips are ips that you can attach to any machine Right, so I have, let's say I have requested AWS for having four IPs and I've got four different machines. I can assign each IP to any machine that I want. So that is in the micro and that is why it is called as elastic IP. So I can dynamically assign it wherever I want to. Load balancers are servers, just servers which will direct the traffic to other servers. I will see if I have that diagram available here which I used. Ah, uh, no, I do not have that here. So, let me go here and do I have a space of new? No. Uh, 
I will minimize it like this. Uh, this basically means what? Cloud load balancers are, so let's say this, there are two servers I have got and two servers are basically doing the same thing. So EC1, so sorry, EC2 first machine I'll just call it A, why to do the picture and this is EC2 B, right? I've got two machines basically running the same job. What I try to do is instead of users, let's say this is a user. Now user is trying to access these machines. Now because some servers, because if one machine goes down, my complete service will go down because I have do not have a second machine. That is why I'll put a second machine here and I'll put a load balancer in the middle. What it will do? So once the traffic comes from user, it will come to the load balancer machine first. Then the load balancer machine will decide where it wants to take the traffic. So it wants the machine, to, the traffic to be there or there, right? This is a decision that the load balancer machine makes. That is why you use load balancer. Instead of having one, you could have many. You could have something like three, four, five, eight, 10, 15, and many companies use it. Uh, I also use it uh, a lot. So that is load balancer for you. So load balancer will come up here. Snapshots. Snapshots are backups of your EC2 machines. So let's say you are taking a backup of your machine every day and like this policy is implemented, all the snapshots would, would go there. Now suppose today, some, for some reason, I broke the machine somehow. I went and deleted a file that I'm not able to recover. Now what I'll do is I'll ask, ask my network admin to go and get, uh, get the backup live so that I can go and fix it. I have done it in the past. So like I have gone in the past for like 20 days even where I realized that you know what, the server is not working optimally and 20 days back it was working perfectly fine. So I would request that network admin again to go and bring it back. Uh, you could check how to make a snapshot live through any YouTube video if you want to. Auto scaling groups. Now auto scaling groups is actually something like this where I will have a group, I will have a container and this container is like this and it might have three machines inside it right it might have three machines inside it and not every machine will be live so let's say this okay i'll send it back send backwards okay so this is c so let's say i have got this but this machine will be turned off send to back even this machine will be turned off right so traffic is going inside this container the, to the auto scaling group and it is just one machine which is handling all the traffic. Now suppose the server, uh, the server capability has been optimized fully, let's say 99% uh, of the CPU is being used. What the auto scaling group can do is it can turn on a machine and get it live in its own container. It can even do this, right? So it can turn, up, turn on as many machines dynamically on to use it inside a containerized environment which means that the uh, traffic will be distributed between all the three machines and the user will not feel any kind of downtime, any kind of slowness in the services that they're accessing. So that is auto scaling group. Uh, placement group, I have no idea. Volumes might be your storages. I'm not 100% sure. The dedicated host, key pair, security groups. Security groups is a set of policies uh, for security that you create. So you create a lot of policies, you put it inside a security group. Now this security group, you can assign to any service that is there. So you can assign this security group to a um, S3 bucket. You can assign, assign it to the EC2 machine. You can also assign it to a RDS, which is a your MySQL database or any kind of database that is there. So that is what you use this for. So if I go here right now, I click on launch. No, I have nothing there. So what will be launched? Cancel. I will create an instance. Uh, let me see how can I can EC2 dashboard and yeah, so I need to click launch instance and it will ask me the details of what I want to launch. So I want to launch a AWA Amazon Linux machine. I have choices of Mac OS here, Ubuntu here, Windows, Red Hat, uh, CUSA Linux and the divine. I choose to have a Ubuntu machine, let's say, and I'll have a free tier available. So this is free tier. It's already available. I could go for ARM or x86. I will go for 64 bit. This is a T2 micro. It's a free tier available, that is what I'm going for. Uh, I do not, do I need a key pair? I have a key pair from yesterday. What you could do is you can create a new key pair. So something like this, uh, Harish EC2, right? So this is how you create, this is a PEM file, create key pair, and it has now been downloaded. Is it, it has not been downloaded, okay. Um, yeah, 
allow assist traffic from anywhere. I'm allowing traffic from anywhere, which means that it's outside AWS own network, I'll be able to access it. Allow HTTPS traffic? No, I won't. So these are the rules. Uh, what do I need? Storage. I need, I just need one 8 GB storage, that's it. Will it be enough for the OS? Not sure. Let me try to configure it. 30 GB of EBS, okay, I can have 30 GB. So I'll just configure this, so size, I'll make it 8 GB. Delete on termination, okay. So if I delete the machine, this storage will be deleted, that is the question there. Anyway, this is done now, let's launch it. Yesterday when I did it, it failed for me. Let us see today if it succeeds or not. Successfully launch, okay, it worked. Launch instance. Now if I go to instances, I see this is there and it is probably turning it on. I click it and I go to actions, uh, I go to instance taste and say, okay, this is on right now. So I should be able to access it. There's a public IP attached to this. This public IP will keep changing unless you attach uh, elastic IP to it. So elastic IP would not change. The public IP will keep changing. Let me see if I'm able to ping this. Mm. Ping, no. So the machine even might be turned on, but it is not taking uh, internet traffic as of now. Otherwise I would have got some data here. You see, this says it's running. Says it's running, is it configured? Uh, let me try to see if I can uh, get an access here. Actions, um, I am not 100% sure if there is a way of doing an SSH on this machine directly from here somewhere. Okay. Uh, if I do connect, what happens? Okay, 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 connect. Let's see. Yeah. So I generally use SSH access, but not from this interface. I go to my machine and do it. Okay, I'm inside the machine now. Yeah. Okay, uh, MD Harish, oh sorry, MKDIR Harish, yeah, okay, there's nothing there. So touch, uh, Saipon learning, nano Saipon learning, this is a training demo for AWS EC2. Perfect, control X, Y, save. And let's cat Saipon learning. You see, the text is there. Uh, okay. Uh, it might be a good assignment for you all to create a EC2 machine and have a similar kind of text written there. I want a screenshot of this page when you have done it. So assignment number one for EC2. All right, I go and close this. Maybe I do I need to do an exit here? Not sure. Exit logout. Yeah, that worked. Perfect. Uh, what I'll do is, because I do not want to worry about this machine being on, I'll just turn it off. Stop instance, because when the instance has been stopped, I won't pay any charges for it. So this is what you should do as well. So this was EC2 for you. Any questions regarding EC2, comment on the video or send me on the chat. Next is RDS. RDS is like we did a MySQL uh, we, uh, demo and we have done a video around it and we have done an assignment around it. So now, now suppose you want to create a store, uh, MySQL storage, MySQL database on the cloud, you could use something like this. I prefer MariaDB over MySQL. So MySQL, MariaDB, almost the same, a drop and replacement, but MariaDB is maintained by original MySQL developers after MySQL was acquired by Oracle. So the little story goes like this, Oracle acquired MySQL, people got worried that Oracle will phase out MySQL because it is obviously a competitor for, to their product and also a free competitor to their product. So because this concern was there, that is why the original developers of MySQL went and created a fork of MySQL. MySQL was open source by that time, even right now, I'm not sure. So they created a, so a, a fork of MySQL and came up with MariaDB. MariaDB, I feel is more optimized than MySQL. You can read more about it with, uh, with, between, uh, for ex between MariaDB, you can do, do just a, do a Google search, MariaDB versus MySQL and you will get the results. 
all right so which version i will give, go with the 10 version here probably that might be the sta stable version i could do anything like this here uh, i want a dev test environment I, I want a free tier environment actually so free tier let me just call it learning master username admin i'll enter a password here and i won't tell you what it is create your own password don't always use the default password it's not a good practice uh, storage i think i don't, don't want more than 1 gb so you see the advantage here is with using cloud services that i can in, uh, increase the size of the storage dynamically i can go and improve to the minimum value 22 gb and the maximum value 6144 so i could store 6144 uh, Sto uh, GB of data in the same data, so I can dynamically go and increase it. I need some minimum value of 20. Awesome, why not? Don't connect to an EC2 instance. I will actually connect it to the EC2 instance, which is the machine that I just created. Uh, oh, it won't. Uh, it is because I've turned off. Hold on, let me check. Yeah, because I've turned off the machine, that I that is why I cannot do it. So I can choose don't connect to EC2 comp uh, compute resource, uh, default VPC public access i will give it public access uh, immunity zone i want this to be available in asia pacific south 1a 1b let's see what it is so asia pacific ap south 1 but it was 1a right what is ap south 2 asia pacific hyderabad this is southeast 3 what is it that was choices available uh, South 1A, 1B, 1C. I don't know what ABC mean here, but I'll just go with 1A. Password authentication, password and IAM database. Uh, that's it. Estimated monthly cost. Why is there a billing cost for me when it's a free tier? We'll turn it off after doing it, so it's not okay. I'll change my password to something. something okay i think it would be able to create it now uh, yesterday again when i did it it failed so this is probably free okay i have this free so it will be estimated monthly clause even if it says this much but it will be free for me create database okay no i don't want elastic cash it is creating this instance so you should also create this instance and have a go at it not a part of the assignment because i'm not showing how to do it right now just for the length of the video okay next is s3 s3 is probably used a lot maybe equivalent to what ec2 how ec2 is used so suppose you want to store your files any kind of files video files audio files text files pdfs images anything that you want to store since the type of the data is so different, you might just choose to store it as you must you might just choose to call it an object and just store it in an object storage like S3. So I already have a bucket here. What what you do is you basically S3 is like uh, an object storage, like I said. Uh, what you might be able to relate by is let me just delete it. Yeah. So think of a bucket like this, any bucket, and you could throw inside anything like this of this shape right or any text like this so you can just throw any kind of data inside it yeah so it is a container for all of them so what you do you create a bucket inside first of all create bucket great bucket lane name a learning name asia pacific mumbai so mumbai is where i'm creating it i can directly do create copy settings so if you have existing existing bucket you can choose that bucket and bring the setting from there uh, block all public access, turn off, ACL enabled, bucket on network object. Okay, so earlier it was the by default it's the all access all public access is blocked. I am opening the access so I can be able to use such a such a bucket. Bucket versioning disabled, tags optional, encryption okay, not really important for me. Create bucket. Okay, learning name already exists. I'll just do a learning. Okay, actually you need a unique name. So I will do Cybon Learning 2. So basically this name is a global name. So all the AWS accounts, uh, 
between that you have to choose a username like your like on instagram you have to have a have, have a handle that is not used by somebody else and that is like needs to be a unique name it is not just your own account it's like between all aws services that is there all right so i've created a cybon learning objects can be public here i'll go here and i'll upload something so let me just find a file that i'll drop So, and this is one of the assignments, so look at it carefully. So, I will put, pick a file like something like uh, something easy. I've got my one of my old photo. I don't want to use that. Okay. Wow, why am I not able to find a single file? I'll just pick a file like this. Yeah, okay. So, Athens stay. I stayed in Athens on 18th Feb. So, I am picking this up. Okay, destination is this. Um, all right, upload. That's it. Once uploaded, up status, upload status, upload succeeded, close this window. I'm able to see a file here now. If I open this, I'm seeing a link like this. If I open this, will the file open? No, there's some kind of access denied issue. How do I fix it? So, I had people on the call yesterday that helped me fix it but let's see permission uh, public access i edit it and i everyone can have a read access to it save changes now i pick this file will it open yeah it opens the file perfect so this is your assignment number assignment number two okay All right, the last service here on today's call is CloudWatch. So what do you use CloudWatch for? Come, CloudWatch is a centralized logging and alerting system. So you have got your web applications. You have got the machines which are hosting those web applications. You have got S3 there. Uh, you might have different kinds of applications. Right? You can have uh, N number of infra items in your AWS. What you could do is you could configure all of them to write to CloudWatch. So this will be the central place where all your logs would be coming. Um, the, your AWS infra objects and your non-infra, non-AWS items, even if you have server somewhere else, let's say on GCP, you can even make them log to this dashboard. So you will be able to see them here. Uh, you can set alarms on them. So let's say there's a particular metric where you say the text like website download failed. Now this is a string which uh, can come in the log and suppose you want to set an alert that if this is if such a error comes throw me a sms send out send me an sms send me an email throw a message on slack you can configure it here create and name any cloudwatch dashboard cloudwatch default monitor using so these are just your all the logs that will come here uh, logs inside uh, alarm all alarms you can set your alarms and you can see the logs uh, personally speaking i do not like the interface of the logs which come here because trying to find something specific is not easy. I try to use something called paper trail. Uh, that is a very simple implementation and the major reason why I use it is just because of simplicity. So this is where I send all my logs and then see it here. So this is CloudWatch, nothing more about it. So yeah, these are the four services that we covered in our last call and this is a re-recording again speaking. Uh, so uh, this is a re-recording of it. So I wanted to give you all the info that we did in that call. We had a lot of discussions around it and a lot of questions were there so suppose people who are new who have not seen the who had not attended the call before or even have attended the call before and still have questions definitely go to the video add a comment there and let me know what your question is i'll try to answer it you can also ask the same question in the group chat that we have on whatsapp all right guys with that we end the session here if i have missed anything do let me know i'll try to answer it for you thank you everyone see you